Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Hotspot Pinpoint widget with the plus add-ons for Elementor. This allows you to add beautiful icons and images over your existing photos with extra tooltip information, images, even videos to lend extra user experience and added information to your website. I'm Jack with Jack and Net, bringing you this guest tutorial on behalf of the plus add-ons for Elementor. Make sure to subscribe to their channel, that way you won't miss out on upcoming videos, and check out my own channel for all things WordPress. Now, let's dive in. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that you have the hotspot widget enabled. So come on over to the plus settings, go into widgets, and then simply search for hotspot. Make sure that it's enabled. If it isn't, turn it on, then click Save. And when you've done that, come on over to Performance and make sure that you clear the cache. You can also do that with any third party caching plugins that you might have. Once that's done, let's go ahead and edit a page. Edit with Elemental. You can then find your hotspot widget underneath the plus add ons down here. Simply search through, or we can search for it up in the little search box. Click and drag it on into the page. When you've done that, the first thing you need to do is choose an image that we're going to be putting these little pinpoint tooltip hotspots over. So click into images, choose one, insert media, and then straight away we can see that we've got a little blob here, and that is our first pin hotspot. So if we click into that, the very first option that we have is pin type. Now you can have an icon, an image, or text. I'm gonna show you each one of these, so we'll start with the icon. Now you can have either Font Awesome or Icons Mind. It doesn't matter which that you choose. You then simply select from the library the particular icon that you want. Now for this, let's stick with Font Awesome, and let's go with a laptop to begin with. So we can see that's changed over the icon there. Now down here we have the settings for choosing the colors, but just before we do that, let's go over to style, and here you'll see that we've got pin icon. Now there are several, there's pin image, pin text, but at the moment we're working with an icon, and I wanna make it a little bit bigger so that you can see it. The first thing we want to do is change the pin width. That is gonna change the overall size, particularly the background at the moment, you're gonna be able to see. Once we've done that, we can then change the icon size, and that's gonna make it bigger, inside the background. We'll come back to these other settings in a minute. For now, let's go back to content. And now we can change our icon. If we wanted, we could change the icon color. I'm gonna leave it as it was. But let's change the background. Maybe go to sort of a lightish medium blue. And then what we want to do is change the hover color. So click over to hover. Again, you could change your icon color if you wanted to. I'm just gonna change the background color. And let's go with a pinky purple. So now when we hover over it, that's going to change. Now you can do this for desktop, tablet, and mobile. If you don't change the tablet and mobile, if you don't turn on this responsive values, then whatever you do on the desktop is going to be absolute on the other options as well. Now, because that might not look right, it's best that you do turn on responsive values because then you're gonna be able to move these little hotspots around your different screen sizes. If I show you what that looks like on the desktop, you see over here we have the left, the right, the top, and the bottom. We can activate each one that we want. For this, I only need to have the left and the top. And if we change these values, we'll see that it's gonna move across our page. So if I move it right over, and pop over there to the left, and we could move it down just a touch. And that's how we can position it and get it where we want it to be. Once we've done that, we can come on down to pin content. Now this is what is going to actually display within your tooltip. So for example, we could just write web design in here. And if we preview this, so that we get the toolbar out of our way, we can see that when I hover over it, it comes up with what we've just written. It doesn't look great at the moment, but we can change that design. You can, by the way, change whether or not you want to see this as content text or as a what you see visual editor, but let's just leave it on content text for now. You can change the text alignment, so whether you want it to appear on the left, right, or middle of your tooltip, 
And of course, we can also change the size. So if I make it size 14, we could also bold it up if we wanted to. Now, when we take a look at it, you'll see that the text has changed. Naturally, you can also change the text color as well. If we come up under the style section of the pin content, you'll then see that we have tooltip options. Here you've got a couple of simple ones, whether or not we want this to be positioned on the top or on the bottom, whether we want it to be light or dark or translucent. For example, if we change it over to light and now take a look at it, we've now got a light background, not that it's standing out particularly well against this image, but we can see it's also now on the bottom. And in this way, it's really easy to choose how you want this to display. For example, I'm just gonna put this on the right, change it back to dark for now, maybe increase the width of it a little bit so it's a bit bigger. And if you don't want it right next to your icon and level, you can also change the offset and the distance as well. That's gonna take it further away. We can also change how the arrow appears, whether we want to have one at all, whether we want it a little bit rounded, and we can change that arrow color. So for example, if I change it to a light blue, take a look at it. Now when we hover over it, we see that it's changed just there. Coming back into the tooltip options, let's move that arrow color back to what it was. You can then choose your trigger. So at the moment, it's simply happening when we're hovering over it. If you prefer, you can have people click the particular icon, then when you hover over it, nothing is gonna happen. They physically have to click it in order for the tooltip to appear. And you can also change the type of animation that you've got. So for example, if we change it to fading in, also notice the durations that we've got down here. These are in milliseconds, so it's gonna be quite quick. It's gonna fade in and out quickly, just like that. Now though, let's change this duration. Let's make it a lot slower. So this is in milliseconds. If I change it to 2000, that is two seconds. Although the duration, let's leave that as it is. That means it's going to disappear a lot more quickly than it uh, appears in the first place. So see that? Much slower coming in, same speed going out again. So really easy for you to choose the effect that you want there. I'm going to change this to, I think, 400 milliseconds on each. And we'll change it back to the default of shifting towards it. So now that we've done that, we can also go into the style options. And here we could choose a background type. So you can have a gradient or we could just have a classic single color. So what I quite like doing is coming up, going back to our particular icon color that we chose earlier and going over to the hover because we chose this sort of pinky purpley color for our icon when we're hovering over it. So I'm just gonna copy that and then come back down, go into our pin content style, and then I'm gonna choose that as my background color for the tooltip. Now we could also choose a border if we wanted. I don't want one, but I am gonna give it a border radius. So let's give it 20. That is going to curve up those edges quite nicely. We could also give it a box shadow. I'm probably not gonna want it to do this, but let's give it one show you what it looks like, make it a little bit extreme. So now when we hover over it, you see that we've got that color change. We've also got this rather extreme shadow going on, but you can obviously style that up the way that you like it. For me, I'm gonna turn it off. And that is our icon. We do also have some extra options down here, so we can change the animation of the icon itself. There's a few on here. I quite like the pulsing one. See that that gives it a little bit of an animation there on the page. And we can also give it a link. This means that if somebody clicks on the icon itself, whatever link you put in here, it's gonna take them to that URL or that page. Alternatively, if you don't want them to link when they click on the actual icon, then underneath the pin content, there's lots of things that we could do. For example, we could put in a little bit of code here, and that's gonna mean that it styles it up separately. So when we open up this tooltip, it's changed the style and we also have our link actually inside the tooltip itself rather than on the icon. By the way, another important option that you have here under the pin content and style, if you go into tooltip options that we just looked at, 
The reason that we could do all of this was because the tooltip is interactive. Okay, if we turn this off, then it means that you won't actually be able to click onto that tooltip. So at the moment, when we hover over it, we can obviously then bring our cursor over it, we can interact with it, it doesn't disappear. Whereas if we turn this option off, it will then disappear, you won't be able to click onto it. So perhaps if you've clicked that by mistake and you're just wondering why it's happening, that is why. So turn that one on. And now that we've done that, we want to add some more so that I can show you the image and the text. A couple of ways that we can do that, we could simply duplicate this one or we could add a new item. So that we don't have to design all over again, I'm simply going to duplicate it. Now, we can't see it because it's currently in exactly the same position. So let's move this over to the side, move it down. Remember to go into your tablet and mobile views and make them responsive so that you can move them around for their screen sizes as well. And now let's change this over. So I'm gonna go with an image for this one. Click into our image and let's go with a picture of the camera. So we've had our camera appear. I don't particularly like it now with that background color. So we could go in, maybe drop down that transparency. We could get rid of it completely if we wanted, but I think I might leave it just slightly, just so we've got a small background going on there. And now that we've done that, remember we could go up to our style tab up here and instead of changing the pin icon settings, we would want to go to the pin image instead. And now what we could do is we could bring up that image size and that makes it nice and clear for us. Now coming back over to the content settings, back on our image, you know how to move it around the page and we could of course change what our tooltip says. But let's do something a little bit different. If we head on back over to the Plus Add-ons website, we can see that down here, for example, they have a video appearing. You can also have images if you want to. And don't forget, by the way, that you can always copy across the designs from their website onto your own using the cross-browser copy and paste feature. There is a separate video tutorial on that, so make sure to subscribe to the channel. So for this one, I want to have a video appear when I hover over it. Well, that's very simple. We can simply embed it using a YouTube iframe. So come to a YouTube video that you want, come down to share, simply click embed and that's gonna give us the iframe code. Let's copy that, come back over to our website and now we can simply paste this in. However, if we take a look at this, by default, it's not gonna fit within the parameters. So if I do this, that doesn't look very good. Also, when I'm hovering over it, we've got this solid color reappearing. So we wanna change that as well. So the way that we do that is under our pin position image section, switch over from normal to the hover mode, click on our color, bring down the opacity, or get rid of it completely, depending on your preference. And then what we want to do is increase the size of our tooltip background. Okay, so underneath the pin content and style section, come into the tooltip options, and I'm gonna change the width from 300 to 400. That's gonna make it a much better size. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go back over to content, and in the code that we just copied over from YouTube, it gives us our iframe widths. So I'm gonna change this down to 400, so it matches, and height, I'm gonna say probably around 200. Let's take a look at this, see what it looks like much better, but I did forget to change the opacity of this part, so let's do it. Under style, and the style options, we've got our color, so let's just drop down the opacity on that, and take another look. There we go. You can, of course, then play the videos directly on your site, we won't do it, but the point is you can, and of course you can pull across an image from within your site as well. That is the beauty of Elementor and the Plus add-ons. Makes it really easy to customize your widgets the way that you like for your own design. And now finally, let's take a look at the text options. So let's copy over our icon again, open it up, move it over to the side, and down a little bit. And now instead of it being on icon, let's change it over to text. So we've had our text appear. Again, we can do the same thing. You can change your normal colors. You can change the hover colors as well. And then we can just simply go down and edit our tooltip.
Now let's take a look at it. And there we go. We have our text, we have our image, and we also have our icon. And we're able to position them wherever we want on the screen. And of course, just make sure that you do the same thing for the tablet and the mobile. Something else that we can do underneath the style tab is have a look at the extra options. So here you'll see that we have an hover overlay color. You can also delay the visibility of tooltips if you want to with a delay timeout, or you can rotate them round if you wish. But the one I really like is the hover overlay. So if we turn that on again, you can have a gradient or we can go just for a classic color. You can have an image if you like, but let's keep this simple. We'll go with a color overlay, maybe go with a sort of sandy, yellowy gold color, maybe bring the opacity down because we still want to be able to see our image behind. And now when we take a look at it, watch what happens when I go over this. Okay, it gives us that overlay background color and I think that looks fantastic. It can really help make your hot points stand out. People know what's going on when they're hovering over it. And then there is also uh, on scroll view animations. However, there is a separate video that goes through this in detail as it's not unique just to this widget. That said, there is something that is pretty unique to the hotspot widget in here. If we come over to this, you'll now find that we have the stagger effect. So let's just turn this off a second and increase it up. That's gonna give you a better idea. Turn animation stagger on and look at that. That looks pretty cool. Now, it's probably gonna be a little bit easier for you to see if I copy over uh, the original design straight from their website. So let's do that. Live copy and paste it over. Make sure to check out the live copy and paste video tutorial showing you how to do that. Now, if we take a look at this, we'll do the same thing. Come on over to style, head on down to on scroll view animation and flip it on in. Let's do the same thing, make this 200. And take a look at this. I think this looks really nice, actually. Lovely little extra touch. Uh, you have also can change the animation stagger, like this. And you can also change the duration as well. So if we want to change the speed, for example, change this to 100, then we can do that. And yeah, it's just a lovely, cool little extra feature that adds some more interest to this widget. It's really, really good. Um, and then you do also have common styling as well. So this means that you can change your default values across the icon text, pin content, etc. And that's for things like the typography, the colors and the background. Again, that's for all your common styling. So if you're not wanting to do them individually, that's an easy way to make quick changes across the whole widget. So there you go. That is how to use the Hotspot Pinpoint widget with the plus add-ons for Elementor. I'm sure you'll agree it adds a lot of extra interest to your web pages and gives a lot more information for your visitors. Any questions, post them on in the comments. I've been Jack with Jack in the Net, bringing you this tutorial on behalf of the plus add-ons for Elementor. Make sure to subscribe to their channel so you don't miss out on the upcoming tutorials. And once again, thank you for watching.